and we are recording. Welcome to the WebRTC Working Group meeting in July. Um, the group abides by the patent policy and only com people and companies listed on the status page are able to make substantive contributions. Next. So we'll be talking about media stream track transfer, media capture transfer, an alternative proposal from UN, and then Yanivar will talk about screen capture. Next. So a few things about this virtual meeting. Uh, the meeting info is posted. Here are some links to the latest drafts. The slides are also linked to on the wiki. We do need a volunteer for Scribe. We have somebody volunteering to be the scribe. Yeah, I can take it. OK, thank you, Tony. Uh, as we noted, the meeting's being recorded, and the re recording will be public. Next. OK, so uh, a few things, just some, some basics about the documents that we just pointed to. Um, one thing to note is that just because they are hosted in the W3C repo does not imply they've been all adopted by the working group. And I think there's at least one and maybe more that are not adopted by the working group yet. Uh, working group adoption requires a call for adoption on the mailing list. So that's something to keep in mind. The repo does not tell you necessarily the status. The second thing is that editor's drafts do not represent working group consensus uh, unless they are confirmed by a call for consensus on the mailing list, in which case uh, they do. So those are some things that may not be obvious about the status of uh, documents in the W3C, but they're, uh, they bear uh, keeping in mind. Next. So uh, the W3C has a code of conduct. If you can go back one. It is described in this link, Code of Ethics and Professional Conduct. It is quite long. Uh, there are a lot of shoulds and should nots, so you probably ought to read it. Um, and uh, I think one thing, if I can boil it all down, uh, we're all passionate about improving the web, uh, but let's try to respect each other, keep the conversations cordial and professional. If we can, there's a zillion other things, uh, so worth reading the Code of Conduct. Next. Okay, so a few few tips on this meeting. We're going to be managing the queue using Google Meet Chat, uh, not the hand raising tool. So if you want to get into this queue to uh, ask a question or something, you type plus Q, and to take yourself out, you'll be minus Q, and I'll be kind of running running the queue on my pad of paper here. Um, we're also asking people to use headphones or an echo canceling speakerphone to avoid echo. Uh, please wait for microphone access to be granted before you speak. Like, don't just interrupt. Um, and state your full name, because that will help the, the note takers know who said what. Um, and also, I don't know that we'll use the poll mechanism. We might. Uh, but uh, if so, we'll use that to gauge a sense of the room if that would be useful. I don't think we have any uh, to do, but we might. Um, so that's basically how we're going to use the tool that we have. Next. Okay, so here's what's on the agenda for today. Um, UN is going to talk about media stream track transfer. We're going to have about five minutes for slides uh, and then 10 minutes uh, for discussion. And then we'll talk about the alternative proposal for media capture transform. Um, and again, about 20 minutes for the slides and then 15 for the discussion. And then uh, we'll have tee up uh, Jan Ivar at uh, 11 a.m. Um, and then we'll have a half an hour for discussion and wrap up. Um, I will give a warning uh, two minutes before your time is up. Uh, and once the time has elapsed, we'll move on to the next item. We're trying to keep, uh, keep on a schedule um, and also let people have enough time for questions. So thank you. So I think uh, UN is next. Go ahead, UN. Thank you. Um, so at the May interim meeting, we talked about the transferable option and we recorded consensus uh, as per the minutes on the transferable option. There was another option, serializable option, that uh, working group uh, feeling and consensus was to go with transferable option. And uh, just to recap, that the idea is to uh, move I, it. I, I, uh, Yuen, I have to interrupt yeah. you there. Um, this misrepresents yeah. the W3C consensus process. 
Um, Oh. Making a PR to add something to a non-consensus document does not indicate consensus. Um, this so, is a so document which is not uh, reached working group uh, draft status. So basically, mm -hmm. uh, the consensus has to be confirmed on the mailing list for the document or for the issue. We'll talk about how to do that in a minute. But uh, it is not accurate to say that this or anything else in, in media capture extensions has working group consensus at this point. So I, I just want to say that in the minutes from that meeting, it was recorded uh, consensus from the working group to go with transferable option. That's just what I'm, I'm trying to state, yeah. and that's what I read in the minutes. Yeah, that, um, that doesn't that doesn't mean there's consensus for for the document. It's important for okay. people to okay. understand that. So oh. in, in the meeting, it, it was thought that there was consensus. Let's say, um, and. One thing that we discussed during the editor's meeting was the lifetime strongly tied to original document. And it was not very clear whether editors had consensus or not on that particular point. So that's why we, we are back to, to the working group. And um, the lifetime strongly tied to the original document is uh, a conservative option. Uh, it's conservative in, in the sense that existing media stream track sources are doing that. Uh, the security and privacy infrastructure uh, assumes that as well. And uh, as I tested it, implementations are doing it as well. So we started uh, drafting media stream track transfer. So part of it is merged in PR21, but some pieces have not landed yet. So uh, a proposal to finish uh, media stream track transfer, next slide. Um, so the proposal would be to uh, do uh, editorial work in two steps. Uh, the first step in media capture main, uh, which is PR 805, would be to clarify that by default, all sources are tied to their creation context. And uh, this is existing user agent behavior, uh, according to my testing at least. That does not mean that uh, we, we can we leave the door open to new types of sources with a different lifetime. If there's a new source, then the uh, uh, spec can state, uh, yeah, lifetime is this way. If lifetime is not uh, stated, then it would be the default lifetime, which is defined in media capture main that we define. And then based on this step one, if we agree on it, then we clarify in media stream track transfer and behavior derived from this step. So we. Uh, we have PR30 in Media Capture Extensions, which would say that if the original document goes away, then the transfer track will get ended. We'll st we still leave it open to new types of sources with a different lifetime, but currently we do not have uh, examples of such sources. So uh, it's just better to describe what, what we have and what we plan to, to implement. Okay, two minute warning. So that's, yeah, so that's the end of my slide. I, I would welcome feedback uh, from uh, the people in this meeting on this proposal. Can we go to the next slide, Harold? Okay, so we've entered the discussion period for 10 minutes. Uh, I guess one question to ask is how we determine consensus. Uh, I would note that just slides at a meeting or people not objecting doesn't imply that. Uh, we can issue a CFC on individual issues or we can issue a CFC to promote media capture extensions to a working group draft um, or some, some variation on that. So that's one thing to talk about. There's also, of course, uh, questions or opinions about what uh, UN has just presented. So uh, let me look at the queue. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, Harold? Yeah, so uh, <clears throat> I had a quick look at the pull, pull request. I do wonder if uh, we can, it's a... Pr Which one, Harold? Uh, 805. 805, okay. Yeah, I got back from my vacation yesterday, so I'm a bit not quite caught up yet. I do wonder if it's appropriate to, uh, to make a pull request on something that we had hoped was finalized to specify behavior that uh, actually should be testable uh, at this stage. But uh, it does deal with the, with the issue that uh, raised, which was that 
we haven't said uh, what what the lifetime what 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 determines the lifetime of a track or the endedness of a track. And I think it's reasonable to do as this uh, PR proposes, which is uh, which is that uh, uh, that for sources created by the mechanisms that we have enumerated, and I would would like them to enumerate them all. It's uh, then uh, the behavior is that uh, the check ends when the source ends, and the source ends ends when the context goes away or at the latest when the context goes away. Uh, the, the, which, what is the context and uh, when does it go away? That's uh, something that we'll probably need expert advice from those who know HTML better uh, about. But uh, I think this is basic, basically the same, and I'm very glad that we're actually making it explicit. So, um, Harold, do you have an opinion on how to uh, review things like this when you say that people, um, you know, who know HTML, bring them in if they need to look at something? If that's not us. Well, the, the way we structured extensions to media capture and to WebRTC, for that matter, uh, it's it's a bit odd because we're we've kind of said that we're we're lumping a lot of things together, and. Uh, in a single document, I mean, uh, the media capture extensions draft also has Jan Evers' proposal for a for a, a browser-based picker, which I don't think there's consensus for at all. Uh, so I think we should adopt this document as a working draft, but say that each proposal within it needs to demonstrate working group consensus before we can advance it out of that draft and into into the main main documents that there are extensions to. But, but how do we track that? I mean, usually it's on a document basis. So you're saying we need some kind of notation within the yeah. document to indicate what is consensus and what is not? Yes, okay. I mean, we, we do need the notation within the document on okay. what uh, what has been consensus called and what, what has just been uh, uh, added. Because I do believe that we need a fair amount of flexibility for editors to add add stuff or fix stuff or finish yeah. stuff. Uh, well, that's, the same may, be true of Web, or, same may be true of WebRTC extensions, because I don't think we've ever claimed that everything in it had consensus. Yeah. And I don't think that has gone to a, to a working group draft either. Yeah, Nivar. Uh, yeah, so I agree there are uh, process interesting process questions here, but I feel we're we're eating into the discussion time uh, yeah. uh, on this particular PR. I would also agree that uh, uh, you know, for better or worse, the extensions documents. Yeah, I share some of those concerns as well, uh, but I don't think that we necessarily need to do call for consensus based on necessarily documents. We can do those on individual issues, mm -hmm. which I think Carl approached as well. I also like the PR. I think it's. I, I think it highlights things that were understood, um, and to the extent they weren't uh, understood, they preserve existing assumptions that uh, were there prior to this new API. So I think this is a good way to iterate, without making any decision about future changes. So I think uh, I'm good to merge uh, this PR and both PRs. But you're referring to. PR 805 and also which other PR? Yeah, anywhere. Uh, what was the second one? The second one mentioned on the slide. Sorry, I was number 30 and extension. 30. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Kareen notes uh, we use notes inside drafts for things that need particular feedback. <clears throat> Thank you, Kareen. Also, uh, one more thing, uh, when it says, uh, yes, we could have a, uh, we could go to the list with call for consensus on every single issue that we discuss. Uh, but in order to make uh, practical progress, I think uh, we do often, when we have meetings, uh, maybe it's wrong to call a consensus. It, it might be better to say there were no objections, right? And that, that lets us 
proceed in goodwill uh, without necessarily uh, blocking folks from raising issues uh, further. Uh, anyone else have a comment? Or question? Okay. Okay. I think we can move on to the next item. So the to record the conclusion here was to merge both peers or something else. Uh, no, no. Well, I I hear um, at least two people saying they wish to merge eight oh five. I think um, given uh, I w I w we can run a week long CFC on that to confirm uh, separately thirty. Um, uh, if there are no objections, let me let me put put it this way: Are there any objections to merging eight hundred five in the, within the group? I, I, <clears throat> I would like more time to do a detailed review, given that okay. I looked at it for one day. Okay. So, uh, how about this? Uh, we'll run a CFC on a eight hundred five, um, and uh, and thirty separately. Um, I think we still need to talk about how we're going to track all of these things in an extension document. I think 805 is simple because the documents on the already, uh, you know, media capture main is, is already uh, on the standards track and moving along. But 30 is a little trickier because the document itself uh, does not have consensus. So anyway, so that's that's the item I would say is, is run a C, uh, like a week CFC on, on 805 and 30. Um, see what happens. Okay, uh, next item. Okay, so this is discussion of the media capture transform alternative proposal. Uh, we're going to have 20 minutes for UN to present it and then another 15 for discussion. Go ahead, Ewan. Okay, uh, thanks. Uh, before diving in into the proposed API, which is really illustrative at this point, uh, I just want to recap first the goals. And I think the API has two goals. The first goal is to enable safe and efficient access to media stream track video frames. There's head detection, object tracking, encoding, rendering in a canvas, uh, things like that. Um, th these are known, and we do not have good APIs for that, so we, we need one. The second goal is uh, what is called the funny hat thing, or the background, synthetic background, the weather use case, where typically you take a camera track, and on each frame of the camera track, you will do some transform like background blurring, and then you have a transform track. And what you really want is to use transform track as if it was camera track. So you want to use it, uh, pipe it into peer connection, uh, do whatever you want. and. Uh, that includes not only the video frames, but also the other things that a media stream track is handling, like muted. If a camera track is muted, then maybe the UI of the application will look at it, and it might be good to be able to uh, hang on transform track and not camera track. Similarly, uh, if you pipe the transform track into peer connection, it may be good to uh, move the muted to transform tracks so that peer connection will send one frame per second, which is the typical behavior. Um, so there's a link there uh, on GitHub, and uh, feedback is very welcome. Uh, ideally, uh, GitHub issues on this repo, but uh, feel free to send emails on the mailing list, private, whatever. Uh, I'll try to capture it uh, on, the, on GitHub issues anyway. Next slide. So. Before uh, diving in the APIs, uh, as you can see, it's only focusing on video. And um, I want to mention that audio, as we discussed in the past, is a bit different from video. Um, I, there are some links there from Google and Mozilla where uh, basically you want to store audio coming from a microphone, for instance, in a ring buffer uh, that is done in 
the worklet, the audio worklet, but you do audio processing in a worker. And uh, these examples provide uh, libraries and examples to do that. And it should be noted that the same worker can do video processing. If you really want to synchronize audio and video in your JavaScript, then you can do the audio processing and video processing in the same work. So that's why I think there's some uncertainty in exposing uh, a built-in audio video generic mechanism. That said, if we really want it, if we find out that we really need it, uh, we can certainly add a generic mechanism based on this proposal, for instance. But it's uh, out of scope of this presentation for now. Next slide. So second question is, um, why not using word programming streams? Um, so in my mind, at least, a media stream track is a readable stream of video frames, but more, there's more than just video frames. There's muted, unmuted, enable, constraint, capability, settings. So there's, there's a lot of things in addition to queue video frames. It's a queue of information. And um, the issue really is that media stream is lacking a reader and GS constructor. And that's why I think it's best to add this API directly instead of trying to go uh, through uh, a readable stream of video frame, which is uh, missing some information. So if you go from a media stream track to a readable stream video frame, you're losing some information. Uh, so I think we should be able to keep uh, all, all this consistent. Uh, in addition, web codec team identified some edge cases and they were not confident with streams, so they, they went to callback APIs. Uh, some WebRTC working group members had similar issues uh, with regards to media stream track, preferring team, transferring. And also, uh, it might be good to stay consistent with tightly related APIs like web codec or web audio, for instance. Next slide, and this time we go, we dive into uh, the API. So, uh, do we want an equivalent readable stream reader? Uh, we, we do not need to, we just need to get the frames. And that's why uh, if you look at existing APIs, there's HTML video element request video frame callback, which is used just for that purpose. It's applied on the video element, but the goal is to take the frames of the media stream track and put, it, put them in a canvas and do processing on them. So we, we could try to do something very similar. And that's what is done there um, in the example um, I'm adding a single attribute, which is called process video frame, and it, which is a callback. The callback is taking as input a video frame, contrary to request video frame callback, so that you can do processing on the video frame directly. And also, it's returning a promise. And that's something that is interesting to do some things. Next slide. So, as I said, the callback is returning a promise. So if you take the example, track process video frame equal transform, basically. Transform function in the example being async, it, re it returns a promise. And the promise, as long as it is not settled, the user agent will not call the callback again. So that enables back pressure. That enables you to say, okay, I'm not ready yet to get a new frame. So user agent, please, please stop. I will tell you when I'm ready for another frame. And the second thing is that uh, once the promise is settled in the proposal, the video frame gets closed. So that means that as long as you are in the async function transform, frame is live, everything is fine. But as soon as you exit, which is asynchronous exiting, then the video frame will get closed. And that can prove to be uh, a good default. Of course, if you need to store the frame longer, then you have to clone it explicitly. But it's explicit. And the implicit, the default behavior would be to have uh, a control lifetime of uh, the video frame. The consequence, of course, of returning a promise is that if a promise takes too much time to resolve, frames are dropped. And this is fine. It's like web audio. If web audio uh, processing callback is taking too much time, you might lose audio chunks, which is terrible for audio. For video, it's, it's okay. And the additional benefit of process video frame uh, as a callback is that there's consistency with media stream track events. If you have a muted event, then you know that the callback will not be called until the unmuted event is fired. The same for ended event. So we have like 
so, something like uh, a very consistent API surface. Next slide. So I did a small, a small uh, write-up uh, of trying to use um, callback versus stream-based approach for a web codec uh, to encode a track with web codec. So as you can see on the left, it's the proposal. On the right, it's it's a little bit more verbose because you have to create a processor, create a reader, and so on. And the additional thing, which is explained in green, is that you have to call frame close explicitly. And of course, things are not always good, meaning that maybe the away transform will reject, and then the frame will not be closed, and we do not like that. Because if you keep a handle on this frame, unfortunately, then you cannot garbage collect it. And even if you garbage collect it, it's bad behavior uh, as per uh, video frame uh, definition to uh, garbage collect a video frame that is not closed. So um, yeah, that's the proposal for goal one, which is reading video frames and just that. Um, second, next slide. Let's go to goal two. So goal two, if you remember, is basically um, to be able to generate a media stream track. And the idea is really to go from a get user media track and go to a transform track. And the idea there is to reuse uh, a model that we know is useful and used and is working, which is readable stream GS constructor model. So a readable stream can be uh, created from an object uh, which will implement some callbacks. So that's what I'm doing hit here. So if you look at the interface, there's a new method called create video track that is taking a dictionary as input, video source. This dictionary has two callback, start and stop. Uh, the start callback is called inside create video track uh, as soon as you create the media stream track. The stop callback is called when the created media stream track is stopped, uh, for instance, by calling media stream track stop. Um, what is interesting is the start callback, which is taking a video source controller as input uh, so that you can, using this controller, enqueue video frames or stop uh, the track. It's very similar to read readable stream, except it's doing something specific to uh, media stream track. On the left, uh, it's, an, it's a simple example where we're going from a get user media track to a transform track by using a GS function called transform. Um, you can see that uh, most of the thing is done in start, but there are two things that are worth uh, looking at, which is if the original track is ended, then we will uh, stop, we will end the transform track as well. And conversely, if uh, the transform track is stopped, then we will stop processing video frames of original track to uh, limit CPU. And then you can use transform track instead of original track. And it, it's, it should work fine. Next slide. So the typical question there would be, uh, oh yeah, that's another slide. So I tried to, based on these two APIs, to look at whether we can uh, do rough equivalence of media stream track processor and media stream track generator equivalent. Uh, equivalent. And I think it's doable and it's not a lot of code, which means that with this API, if you want to go to stream world, you have to write a little bit of code, but it's it's not a lot. And it can be tweakable so that if you want to preserve some info, you can do it. If you want to lose some info, you can do it. You can do really whatever you want. And, and that's, that's useful. Uh, next slide. So the typical question would be, why not passing directly a writable stream to create video track? And this would be somehow equivalent to media stream track generator, right? Um, the answer is that passing a writable stream to create video track is not enough. You need to, given a media stream track is more than a queue of video frames, it has muted and muted, uh, for instance, we need to be able to handle it. And if we look at level two, because this is level one, we can uh, have an example of how this API can be extended very easily. So why, support it, why supporting muted and muted? 
um, if the original track gets muted, for instance, uh, your computer gets locked, uh, then the camera will be muted and the web application will, for instance, send the information to whoever you're talking to that the camera is disabled, um, and, and that's fine. Um, it can be done on the get to the media track, but it would be very good to be able to do the same thing on transform track so that you isolate the application that is providing the track, the content, from the application that is doing the UI or the application that, that is doing the peer connection work, for instance. And to support that, it's surprisingly simple, at least it seems. Uh, you add an attribute to video source controller, which is a Boolean, which is muted. And when you set muted on the controller, then it will mean that the track will be muted, which might trigger a, a muted event and the application will react upon it. And also, the controller is res responsible to enqueue frames. So if the cont controller is muted, of course the controller will not uh, enqueue frames. It makes no sense. So we can, uh, if we put everything in a single place there, it's very convenient and I believe it, it will be easy to, to use and implement as well. Next slide. So yeah. Um, it's good to start simple. Uh, so as I said, we can add process video frame, we can add create a video track and stay there for, for a while and have good functionality. But it's very important to make sure we can easily extend the API to, to get the, the full uh, API and the full functionality at the end of the day. So I looked at the support for track enabled, meaning, meaning if you set false on transform track enabled, being able to set uh, falls on original track enabled, which might be useful in some browsers so that uh, the camera will be will be shut down. Uh, it's very easily, it's, it's doable, it's in the full proposal. Uh, and the same for capabilities, constraints, and settings. It, it's, it's handy if you can uh, change the width and height of the transform track, for instance. And it would be very handy if the transform track would say, oh, I'm requested to go from HD to HD. So let's ask the original track to actually do it uh, and let's answer based on that information. And there's uh, an API proposal for, for doing that. And that makes it very handy. Next slide. Now we'll scare you. Uh, this is uh, an example where what I'm doing is exactly doing that, meaning trying to have a transform track that is that has the same behavior of as camera track, except there's some transform for each video frame. So on the left, you will see, uh, I don't have enough time, I'm guessing. So you will look at the example yourself, but uh, I think it's not a lot of code and it's working fine. You use, you do a processing in a worker, you transfer. It, it's not, it does not look, it's not horrible. It's pretty uh, simple. Next slide, because I'm running out of time, I'm guessing. Okay, yeah, yeah, beyond gold. You actually yeah. have uh, uh, six minutes, uh, Yuan, so you actually oh. have a little bit more time. You go to 10.45. Ah. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> Great, thank you. <laughs> um, so beyond gold too, which is trying to transform uh, using JavaScript and, and be as transparent as possible. Um, we can also look at extending the API to handle native back pressure signals. Uh, things like HTML media element, peer connection, web audio. Um, I think we need to do further investigation there because it's, it might be very easy to write code that is only working for a browser or is only working for a specific sync. And um, so the API proposal allows to add it easily, but I think we, we need to take our time there and um, implement, add it if we really need the, the, the feature and if we're ready to define what is a thing and how it behaves. Um, the other thing which I'm excited about would be to extend the API to handle transform. Uh, it would be great to add dedicated transforms like you put Wasm in the middle and you go from one media stream track to another and everything is done for you. And that would be great because it can help offering. You use good practice, good practices. You have efficient code, 
Uh, for instance, you can do optimizations like zero memory copy in some cases. Um, so, and the proposal there, uh, it's very natural to actually do it. Uh, there, there are some examples, I believe, in the, in the proposal as well. Next slide. Oh yeah, that's that's almost the end. So I will have I will have more time for discussions. That's cool. Um, so my tentative conclusion, uh, maybe it's biased, but I, but I think the the proposal, uh, the first advantage is that it, it's simple. You you have two media stream track methods. One you interface the controller. Uh, I believe it's easy to learn and use. It blends well with existing APIs that uh, people are already using. So that, that's an advantage. It's also safe and efficient. There's no buffering by default. Video frame will get closed for sure. So uh, that's a good behavior. Uh, in the proposal, it's worker by default. And I think we should keep that, at least initially, until we gather more experience. As shown in, in the example, uh, what we want to do there is like rep repetitive tasks. So uh, since we are almost ready for media stream track transfer, and given the example I gave where you do transfer, it, it should, be, should be fine and not uh, a lot of hassle to actually um, initially start with this option and can learn from it after. Um, I believe it's, it's a powerful. Uh, if we just start with a reduced API set, we get most of the functionality, but if we, if we go with more and more, we can progressively add more APIs and we will have full media stream track uh, shimming support. And uh, I believe it's doable uh, in a consistent way. And as shown in the slides, I hope, um, I think it's flexible. There's a clear path toward native transforms. If you want to use what going with streams, you can do it yourself with a few lines of code and it will be your own bridge, meaning you can select what you want to transfer and what you might be ready to, to lose in terms of information. And that's my, the end of my presentation with three minutes in advance. Oh, okay, so we're uh, gonna go to questions and I'll manage the queue. Please add plus Q if you wanna get in. I think I'm the first person in the queue, uh, UN. Uh, thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Um, I'd like to just ask a few questions relating to the uh, back pressure. It's a couple of slides ago uh, where you talk about the, in the very beginning, you talk about the promise. So maybe Harold, if you can go mm -hmm. back uh, to that, uh, the way that works. I, I think it's accurate to say that by default, the queue length is one. Uh, yeah, it's uh, previous slides. So um, I'm just wondering, you and say I'm doing something fairly computationally intensive, uh, but it doesn't really matter whether it's in a worker or not. Uh, but for some reason, the, the length of time I take is such that um, another callback would be coming. So you know, I, I ask for a high frame rate, and I've I've taken more than my allotted time. Um, mm -hmm. What uh, is what, what uh, can you do? Oh, yeah? What what um, what's get, is it? possible for me to ask for a queue of yes. say two uh, I or how or will I automatically lose the frame uh, you know have it so do I, do I, see, what I'm that. wondering is I may not know how much time I've taken so that I don't want to have to clone every frame you know every time right where it's it's not going to be necessary because you know and, and manage my own queue and the timing and everything um so if you if you look at video frame clone, it's uh, the video frame is is a recounted object. So the clone currently is uh, incrementing a counter and decrementing a counter. So it's not uh, uh, a process intensive operation. Um, so yeah, you can you can clone it. You will have a count churn of plus one, and then it will be on your side to actually decrement the counter, and uh, that's it. So so you won't. Gar uh, but I'm, I'm still trying to understand. So I've cloned it, you know, I'm, I've done this every time because I don't know whether I'm gonna exceed my time window. And if I clone it, are you saying that the, that there, that the API will manage a queue for me? H how do I define how long that'll get? Like if I'm cloning everything, will it stack up conceivably? 
Uh, uh, it's it's up to you. You you can use uh, readable stream if you if you want to. Uh, you, you can create an array. It's it's really up to you to to do what, what you what you want. Um, my guess is that uh, what you can do basically, let's say you have a, a queue of ten. What what you will do is uh, maybe apply back pressure at, at some point uh, to say, okay, now I'm not ready to to take more. Uh, if it's repetitive, then you should decrease the frame rate because you, you don't want to create new frames. Right. But other than that, yeah, you will you will create. But basically, all this to, is on the application to manage that to manage that queue. It's not in yeah. the, not in the API. Okay. And and they can do it however we want because uh, what is good for an API for an application might not be exactly suitable for another application, and that's where JavaScript is shining. Okay, thank you. Uh, next in the queue, we have Harold. We can't hear you, Harold. I'm not hearing you. So, shit. Oh, I'm good. Uh, this way, media stream track is no augmented readable stream. That's false. Media stream track is a control surface. That's all it's defined as, and uh, uh, well, that's spec language, uh, really, but it's false. Uh, I did well, find it, the, I, I, say, I said I said it, it was in my mind, and uh, yep. I still You're, you, you, have a wrong, you have a wrong picture in your mind. Sorry about that. Uh, but uh, I did find the control controller concept rather interesting because, uh, as you know. We've been struggling with uh, exactly how to communicate the stuff that is not frames in the media step team track generator controller case too. You'll remember that my original proposal had uh, the three levels of breakout box where one level was uh, control signals traveling all over the place. But since we weren't able to get a proper discussion on, the, on that to figure out what the requirements were, we didn't get to specify it. But my main problem is I don't see where I don't see the use case for this level of control that you're proposing. I mean, we have demonstrated that uh, using streams works. This is a more complex API, and when you look at it, you're, it looks as if you're saying that okay, we will implement an API that is new and different, and implements half of streams, and we will require the the user to implement the other half of streams in order, in order to have a working solution. So what exactly what use case were you aiming for when you when you when, when you when you decided that this this was a better API? So um, the goal goal two um, for the generating part uh, as I said was um, you have an OGM track. It's a get user media track. And what you want to do is to apply a transform. And that's the funny hat thing. And then the funny oh, hat thing. So are you claiming that? Track, uh, so again, are you claiming that this API is better for funny hats? Well, let me finish, please. And I will answer to, to your question. Um, if you take media stream track generator, for instance, it's blocking the muted and muted state. So if you apply a transform, then send it to peer connection, then you, you lose, for instance, the one black frames per second uh, that is normally happening for uh, muted media stream tracks. And people are using it. We, we added it because there's a purpose. And it's good that we have an API that will not block that, that will not break that, so that you can insert a transform and nothing of the rest of your API will change. If you enable the track, that you are that you have been provided, then everything works. The camera will be shut down, whether it's transform track or not. Uh, it will still behave the same, and and that's that's cool and that's useful. Yeah, I believe so. So, I'm I'm happy to uh, provide uh, more information and more use cases uh, in, in the draft if that's not clear enough. So basically, you're saying that because you have um, uh, specified the signaling. It API in addition to a frame handling API, uh, callbacks are better than streams. No, I haven't said that. 
That's what I heard, heard what? you say. I just heard you say. Uh, I provided some use cases and uh, I'm providing an API that is fulfilling these use cases and media stream track generator current proposal or past proposal, any, any of the past proposal that we have made of media stream track generator, we are not fulfilling these, um, these use cases. Okay. Thank you. I'll yield to the next thank you. Uh, Thomas. Hello. Um, yeah, so I work uh, mostly on the web codec side of things. Um, so actually on this slide, I uh, just have a comment on something that was said here. So we did move away from um, streams for web codecs at Stealth, but we moved to streams uh, and to breakout box because we had a video track reader and we thought that um, streams are actually just fine for, um, for the use case of getting uh, video frames out of a camera. So it's true that we had um, that using streams with web codecs, which is a different thing than media stream track, would have been too complex, but it was um, fine for us for this case. Um, and then on topic of request video frame callback, so request video frame callback is not just a callback API. It also has a very specific timing that is closer to request animation frame. Um, it's run during the rendering steps, uh, which means that there is actually a, um, if ever the task queue or the micro task queue is really long on the main thread or worker thread, um, request video frame callback is guaranteed to eventually um, cut through and be able to run. Whereas that's not necessarily the case if you don't have um, that type of API. And also a request video frame callback pulls the latest frame from the video element right before it runs. So you always have the freshest frame, which I don't know will necessarily be the case for a callback um, API. So I guess um, with uh, Bernard's question about back pressure and um, queuing things yourself, I, I wonder how do you make sure that you have good fresh frames and also um, is it possible to capture every frame with your proposal? I mean, uh, I'm just thinking of, do people ever want to record the entirety of a stream while losing as few frames as possible and then having a promise back pressure? I don't know how that interplays. So, sorry, lot there. Yeah, uh, no, that, that, that's fair. Um, so talking about the, the last thing, the video frames, if you look at uh, web audio and uh, audio worklet, you're not guaranteed to get every audio chunk, right? If you're taking too much time, it, it will not be guaranteed. In practice, it's fulfilled because if you lose an audio chunk, then it's, it's terrible, it's very bad. And uh, it's true that it's guaranteed by having uh, the um, audio uh, JavaScript processing in the audio thread. My, my guess is that it can be done uh, it, for video, you do not need like this exact timing. And I can do some experiments. I haven't done, done experiments, but my guess is that if you do the uh, process video frame, then NQ in uh, web codec, then you, you will in practice not lose frames, except if you are like in a, in a very exhausted uh, API. And in that case, I believe it's very good that you, that you start losing frames because otherwise uh, you, you will be screwed. And in terms of precise uh, latest frame, um, we, we, we need a spec, right? And there are some details there. I think there is some flexibility in how the user agent can actually uh, decide what it can do. For instance, if it knows that uh, the pixel buffer pool is like 20, then maybe storing like one, two or three frames is fine. But if it knows that the buffer pool is eight or six or even three, then uh, the uh, user agent might do a different thing and might drop frames uh, much sooner. And that's one thing that I have some concerns with media stream track processor where you can set uh, the, the storage because the storage to me depends on the device and the capabilities of the device and particularly the pixel buffer port. Size. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Jan Ivar. Yes. Uh, so, 
Yes, uh, first, Bjorn, thank you so much for uh, this presentation. I'm very glad we're discussing this, and uh, uh, this is what we need to be doing. Uh, the, uh, first, some things I like. I like that it relies on transferable media stream track and only exposes new APIs in workers and not on main thread. Uh, this is essential to Mozilla. Um, I also like how it covers integration of mute, unmute, and apply constraints. But I, I don't think it's fair to say that, I don't think, but those are accessories. They're not really intrinsic to callbacks, I feel. And that's something we could iterate on anyway, but it's still worthwhile to discuss. Uh, I even like the shape of create video track and how it takes a dictionary that's sort of reminiscent uh, of the underlying, so underlying source argument to readable stream. Um, and I also like the, uh, solving the problem of controlled lifetime of video frames. But again, I don't feel that that's unique to uh, callbacks. Yeah. I, I feel um, like a, a so goal, sorry. No, go ahead. Okay. Um, another thing, I feel like there's a goal three missing here, which is uh, that we want to exfiltrate media stream track video data to JavaScript syncs, such as web transport or RTC data channel. And I'll come back to that later uh, because the improvements I feel like we should make here, uh, I agree with Harold that uh, media stream track and stream are not the same concept. So it's not fair to compare them. Um, and it's also unfair to fail streams over not handling things like ended, muted, and apply constraints. The streams never promised to solve that. Um, and I think uh, the stream polyfill you show um, uh, demonstrates that well. And that a better comparison is that streams are better than promised callbacks. And this is where I uh, dislike, I basically dislike the callback parts because I feel this implements, this reinvents streams in at least three places. And one is, uh, streamlining of callbacks. Uh, you're using a promise from the callback to only process one video frame at a time. And a push uh, that's uh, equivalent to a push source readable stream that has this guarantee built in. Uh, the other one's back pressure. The JavaScript can use the same promise to signal back pressure to the producing source. <clears throat> and that's great. But that leaves JS to figure out for themselves uh, how, to, for instance, correctly propagate uh, any back pressure that may exist downstream from themselves up to the source. <clears throat> and this is where the streams API uh, is the web platform's robust composable pattern for back pressure. And I feel like we should embrace that. For instance, if you want to pipe this to a web transport, uh, you need, you know, you want to be able to create a pipe for that data. Even if you still have to handle things like ended and uh, apply constraints outside of that. <clears throat> and so the last thing is that uh, yes, audio workload uses, um, like a video frame, it's a chunk in a video stream, basically, inherently. Right? Uh, what's different from audio workloads, synchronous callback API, those APIs were narrowly inserting synchronous buffer processing in JavaScript into the native media stack. But here we also want to exfiltrate data to JS uh, and do it asynchronously. And this is why composition is good and practices uh, become critical. So I think we need a good JS API that informs and guides users and implementers about the right way to use these APIs to get back pressure correctly, because that's a really tricky thing to get right. So I feel like uh, we have synchronous callbacks in Audi Worklet. We have asynchronous promise callbacks here, and then we have streams. And I don't think we need uh, three concepts there. Okay. And to quote, uh, to quote the uh, readable stream spec, uh, the platform is full of streaming abstractions waiting to be expressed as streams, multimedia streams, file streams, global communication, and more. The stream standards enables use cases like, uh, and I quote, video effects, piping a readable video stream through a transform stream that applies effects, effects in real time. Okay. Um, I think we're going to so, close the queue now because we're about to run out of time. Can, um, I'd like can to I let. Answer? Okay, go ahead. <clears throat> So just two points. Uh, first, you said uh, you like the lifetime of a video frame, and that, that was that was part of uh, using a callback because with a callback, it's it's very clear that you have a callback and you, you will have it for the lifetime of a callback. If you start to call read or pipe to, you you start to not have the same thing, especially if what you will do is probably pipe to to a transform stream, and the transform stream now needs to do two things: it needs to close it and keep the back pressure. So the callback there is, uh, I believe, very much simpler to use. The second thing is web transform to video frame. You don't need to pipe 
uh, a video frame into a transfer. What you need to do is to go from a media stream track to web codec, then to web transport. And you will see that web codec is not using streams in the middle. And uh, everything is fine with it, apparently. So I, I, would, I would say that, that that's fine. Uh, if, you, if you want to do back pressure uh, between the camera to web transport, then either you, we need to change web codec and we need to prove that it's very useful, or we need to let uh, JavaScript uh, handle it. And that's what is being done here, which is a consistent with uh, web codec. Okay. Uh, can I ask? Uh, I thought I thought the video frame lifetime uh, was until the promise was resolved. Was it not? Um, so in the web codec example, you will send the video frame to the web codec encoder, and then when you exit, the video frame object will be closed. It does not mean that uh, the resources the resource will be released. It will be owned by the encoder until it gets encoded, and that's how WebRTC pipeline mm -hmm. is working currently. So, uh, but but it, it's not synchronously released uh, in the callback after the callback returns synchronously, right? Um, so, so it, you, you, yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. I think I think we want to move to Guido. Oh. Right. Okay, we can we can continue talking uh, on that yeah. on GitHub, I guess. Uh, I would yeah. really like uh, all your feedback there, Guido. Yes, uh, can you go to slide 18? Yeah, two, two more. Yeah, this one. So this one, so uh, I wanted to point out a couple of details that are not uh, well uh, expressed or conveyed by by this uh, slide. So, so the the concept of uh, tying the the flow of data uh, strongly coupling it to the track and for and forcing you to transfer the track so that, so that you can access the flow of data in the worker uh, has some uh, problems. So for example, uh, in this example, we you highlight how short, although you, you, you weren't as minimalistic as you could have been for this uh, stream example, which would, could have been a lot shorter if you had used uh, PyPeak. Uh, for example, what, what do you do uh, when you want to close the track because uh, you no longer have the track you had to transfer it so that you could access the the frames so now uh, the example if you want to stop the track the example would not be so short because now you have to communicate with the worker to tell it to close the track so if you want to for example use this uh to have a self view then you you cannot do it directly with the track because the track is not in in the window it's in the worker so you lost a track too so now you have to complicate the example and you have to maybe make a clone of the track to keep it on the main thread so <coughs> you can operate with with that and and uh and then you have to 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 manage the tracks uh, one here and one in the and one in the workers so let's say you want to stop can, it from the from from the button from from the stop button can, to end the call yeah can can i okay uh, just five seconds to answer that um so th this is related to media stream track transfer not really to uh uh, this proposal, which is adding a callback, uh, there's a separate yeah, yeah. issue. No, no, well, I, I'm discussing. I'm discussing the proposal as a whole, uh, because uh, you're you're, okay. you're you're tying it uh, as a whole. Of course, that's not inherent to using callbacks. I mean, you could have another object, put the callback in another object, and transfer that other mm -hmm. object. That's basically what streams does. So, uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's another object that you can transfer instead of having to transfer mm -hmm. the whole track. Because uh, so, the, that and that that's why why I also disagree with your view that the track is a stream. Because the the track I see it as the control surface of the media flow, but the media flow is separate. 
and that's that's the model that we have that we 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 do everything on the main thread which is the control thread with the using the track you you put it in the in the media element you send it to your connection you you interact with the rest of the logic the other apis with the ui you, you click and call and then you call stop on the track so you you do that but the media flow is is, is in the background and 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 tie in the media flow to the track gives you these problems that, that now now you're tying the control to that so 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 of course that doesn't mean that that, that you cannot keep using track but then then you are ending up with an object that looks more and more and more like strings like like which is ex what happened uh, to your generating part which is basically uh, a framework very similar to the one for for streams uh, and and in part it, it serves also as a workaround for the fact that you have to transfer the track so that you can turn the other track in, in sort of a replica so that you can forward the operations automatically to the track that is on on the other context so so that's one of the things that i wanted to to mention that that the the example of callback versus stream i mean this is not not just okay. a, 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 a thing so it's not that it's very short because it's a, it's a callback i mean there there are consequences to making it uh, that short because you're tying it to the track and not having it uh, in another object that you can transfer separately so by treating the, the media flow separately which is which is the actual model on which uh, the the uh, the new stream track API uh, works. Uh, um, I would be glad to continue the discussion. So if you could file it on GitHub, that would be great. And then we can we can continue it. Thanks. OK. Uh, I think I'm next, and then Harold, uh, and then we'll move on. Um, so I had a question, Yuen. Um, I got a little bit confused about uh, how you'd implement the uh, default uh, track behavior, which is to send black. So basically, when, when I mute the track, I'm not going to get a callback, right? So uh, I, do I, as the application, now have to set a timer and, and create my own black frame and send that uh, every second? Or you also talked about how uh, you could bring across the mute behavior to the transform track. Uh, and that that would so, cause it, like if it went into WebRTC, that would cause the encoder to, to turn black. Uh, so, to, yeah. Uh, apparently, we are over time, and uh, so I, I can answer to that uh, probably offline. Uh, okay. Email or GitHub issue as well. Okay, I'll I'll file I'll file an issue on that. And I Th think the last you. one is, ha is, ha is Harold. You're the last in the queue. I I dropped out of the queue. So ah, okay. Please go on. All right. So we'll uh, we'll move uh, to the next. Uh, series of presentations, which is from uh, Jan Ivar. Uh, over to you, Jan Ivar. All right, thanks. And uh, if we finish early, maybe we can come back to some of this if there's uh, yeah. interest. Um, we, yeah, we so have I'm going to talk for, for, for uh, next. Yeah, session. we have a little buffer, yeah. Good. I'm on holidays, so huh? I will leave early if possible. <laughs> OK. So I have two issues uh, around screen capture, uh, 182 and 158. And I'm going to just jump right in. Uh, next slide. Uh, and it's basically we, the working group, uh, just to define our scope and the problems we want to solve, I think we need to recognize and better integrate web, pres web presentations um, in the platform. And so looking at what we have today, and you, you might think that's in scope, but it's actually a little unclear because you know um, the URL for our spec is screen share, but the name of the spec is screen capture. But uh, for the introduction of our document, it does say that the number use number one use case of screen capture is screen sharing using WebRTC, which means video conferencing presentations. And in 2021, uh, this means web presentations. No offense to PowerPoint or other native applications, but that's where we are. Uh, <clears throat> unfortunately, the number one use case is unsafe, and that's well documented in existing spec. So I think this working group must fix this. That's my first call to action. Next slide. <clears throat> so <clears throat> here's a link to a YouTube. It's on YouTube, a presentation I gave uh, at the uh, W3C AC meeting in April. 
where I put a slide uh, about safer presentations. And that was based on my understanding of uh, what's been presented in this working group so far <clears throat> and, and the broad sense of what problems. Uh, so again, I'm trying to make sure we're all on the same page about the problems that we want to solve. And what, what I said was that more and more people are presenting online, but they may be inadvertently sharing things they didn't mean to. And there are hidden risks, too hard to explain even to technical folk. Uh, with sharing untrusted dynamic web pages. And we, the working group, think presenting can be more web friendly and safer at the same time. And um, by integrating tab capture directly with web pages for them to capture themselves. That way, a slide maker web page could join an ongoing meeting, uh, and the meeting could be recorded client side as seen by a participant. Now, security is critical, so this would uh, require site isolation and permission because rendering may reveal an obvious sensitive information like your browsing history. <clears throat> All right, so uh, next slide. So this uh, this was basically talking about get viewport media that we've been discussing. Uh, <clears throat> but I think what also come to light uh, through discussions on GitHub and earlier meetings is that this also we also need to fix get display media. <clears throat> so um, I open an issue on that. And today's choices, and this is pulled from, uh, I think all the browsers, uh, most browsers have these choices. They're named different things, but they boil down to, uh, uh, and the screen picker comes up, you can pick, the end user can pick between sharing their entire screen, a window, or their tab, or a tab, sorry. Uh, these all, all of these choices are unsafe. You might overshare what's on your desktop. You might, uh, if you share a tab, even if you have a nice screenshot in the picker where you see, oh, there's my app web application, you're actually not sharing just that web application. You are sharing its container, including its backward forward cache and everything you've done pre previously. So if on the first slide you accidentally hit the back button, you're going to share what you were doing before the meeting, potentially, if there was a previous page in your cache to their, your entire meeting. And that, that's unacceptable, I think, and unsafe. And you might also uh, flip between tabs and, and and searching for document, things like that. Uh, not to mention that there's active malicious attacks on the web, same origin policy, specifically from sharing web services. So the proposal is that um, user agents should come up with a new safe choice, which is called, uh, well, I'm calling it web page, uh, which is a little, we'll get back to what that actually means. Uh, but I think that's the best I could come up with with what users understand. Mm -hmm. But what it basically would be is they would it would be the top level browsing context with uh, where the top current document is both site isolated and opted into HTML capture. But that capture the user agent would turn off capture if there were some cross origin navigation. So it's more than a single page technically. Uh, maybe you could call it web app or website, but you know bike shed. And user agents could give preferential placement in the picker for these things. Uh, and you see that in the screenshot to the right, which is actually a mock-up based on a feature that's already available in Google Slides. All I had to do was change the first tab, the name of the first tab from this page to web page. So, uh, and I had a little caption at the bottom to, to show the name of the document. Um, and also as you know, extra candy APIs like uh, we can then consider, we now have a safer environment because we have a safer container for sharing where we can add more specific APIs, where it's more logical to, API, to add APIs like communications between capture and capture-y because now there is a well-defined capture-y. It's not a capture-y that you, you might, where the goalposts may move and you have to change the capture-y because the user navigated to a totally different origin. So, and now we could implement things like next and previous slide controls or IDs, because this is now a safer garden for those options. Um, so I was going to ask about uh, what people feel about that, but I guess we're, the format is that I finish my slides and then we discuss. So I'm going to move on. So uh, without assuming that everyone agrees on that, because we're going to discuss that later. Uh, Assuming we want to go forward with something like that, 
what would the spec need to facilitate these new choices in user agents? Because specifications are mostly concerned with your JavaScript APIs, and they don't typically dictate much about what user agents do, which is good. I think that's the right breakdown. But we need a few things. <clears throat> Editorially, we need to name this new source as a concept, whether it's a web page, website, or app. And we want to loosen the elevated permission language in the spec today for these sources to allow user agents more flexibility in actually promoting and pushing uh, users toward these sources. Because there's uh, existing language in the spec that prevents that. And we might even encourage uh, user agents to give pre preferential placements to them, specifically over tabs, for example, which are uh, provide similar functionality, but in a more risky way, maybe with a should statement. You're now, and we want to. You know, at, at the end of the present presentation time, so please speed up. All right. Uh, sorry. So yes. Yeah, so and also, we need to specify how sites can participate, and that they need to have uh, satisfy window cross origin isolated, and document policy HTML capture, and require document policy HTML capture. These are uh, cross origin all isolated exists. The other two uh, need to be added. And hopefully, this could be the same site requirements that can be shared with Get Viewport Media. And uh, so, do we want to discuss this one, or I have a separate slide, which is kind of a separate item? So, what do we want to do? Discussion. Uh, All right, I'll just have, propose uh, this. Okay. We have. People uh, can hopefully. Uh, we have two people in the queue right now: uh, UN and Elad. Um, okay. I agree with the analysis. Um, tab catcher is not great. Um, looking at the scheme, the, the UI that you that you showed, uh, web page or tab, people will not understand it. Um, so I, I'm not I'm not sure we would be able to to ship to ship that to to users. Uh, there might be other pickers that might not be able to do the difference between web pages and, and, and tabs. I would much prefer that we try to move tab, ca tab capture to be safe and maybe mute on navigation, unmute on user uh, activation, Tr try to do some things like that. It seems that it would be easier if we want to have like uh, Pickers that are more natural and easier to understand. Okay, would you include that? Um, so, uh, so you wouldn't necessarily want. So, how would you then expose? Uh, let's say we have success. Get viewport media. I assume you it would uh, require cross origin isolated and document policy. Then, right? In your mind, yes. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I guess I'm thinking that once we have those benefits. Uh, we should look into ways to maybe extrapolate that value into get viewport media for user agents that want to or feel like they could uh, they could accomplish that user uh, interface task. Would you be uh, opposed to uh, having the spec help along with those things and and to re uh, specifically to loosen the elevated permission language around such sources, even if you don't implement um. Why not? Uh, I'm I'm open to to that discussion. Yes. Okay. Great. Thanks. Uh, Elad. Yes. Thank you. Um, so I think that we're generally we see eye to eye when it comes to where we want to be eventually, and where we don't really agree is about the way there. And um, um, like we've discussed these topics uh, for a few meetings now. So forgive me if I refer it back to you know the entire history. Um, I think that there are some dangers in trying to prevent additional improvements to the existing mechanisms or imagining that we could one day just do away with them uh, without remembering that people are using them at the moment and that people have alternatives. So if we do not keep on improving what we currently have and or if we cut off support for that, then users will be pushed off of the web platform and towards installing native software which is not any safer than what we currently have, uh, not have, but rather propose. So while I'm very happy with this uh, as a direction, I don't really understand why we're tying things like um, 
controlling, uh, sending the other tab messages like previous slide, next slide with this. Like why, why can we only send that? Uh, like basically this is capture handle, right? Like you're saying capture handle, you're not very happy with that unless it's site isolated. I don't really understand why, uh, why we say that. And I think that the vision needs to um, acknowledge that we're probably not going to get off of allowing the user to share the current screen window or tab, even if it's not site isolated, probably for years to come, because the entire web is not just going to become site isolated overnight. And if users cannot share certain websites, then they're just going to install extensions and they're going to install software. And um, I don't know if this is where we want to push them. Well, I would respond that, um, yes, there are iterative proposals in the working group. I'm not presenting those today. Right? I'm, I'm presenting the long-term uh, view that I hope we can have a working group consensus and moreover, the, the problem that we want to solve. And there might be short-term solutions and there might be long-term solutions. So I think parts that we agree on, um, where we have made progress like with site isolation and a document policy, I think those right now are blocking uh, get viewport media as well um, so that we need to start uh, we need these uh, to bear fruit now and, and produce something in the spec so um, yes I, I regret putting in the mention of other apis but uh, i wouldn't my um, my intent was not not to to say those apis are blocked unless we have this uh, all, all what i meant to say is <clears throat> that and this is an environment where i actually uh, like your proposal. So so I would take it as a, as a positive that uh, we can then argue about the, <clears throat> I think there's some valid concerns about how do we how do we iterate um, if we can't get all everything at once. And I also feel like we need uh, a long term direction. So I hope, uh, and it sounded like you were mostly liking what you heard here, ex apart from that, the impression I, I didn't mean to give, which is that it might hold up other things. Um, so I like some of this, uh, and I don't want to steal too much of your time by, you know, analyzing what I like and what I don't, you know, my opinion is my own, uh, but, um, it has happened in the past that when a general direction was painted as like, Hey, this is where we want to be. Then other iterative, uh, improvements were rejected by Mozilla saying, Hey, but this does not get us closer to where we eventually want to be. And in fact, it makes the transition, the delta smaller, and therefore we would be less interested. So I, having heard those arguments before, uh, I'm a bit worried that accepting this as a general direction would make us move slower in the iterative process. Well, I, I think our objections on, on, on the other proposals you're referring to uh, remain for Mozilla, uh, regardless of this. Uh, they're based on principles, not on uh, uh, on this this particular long term view, is that fair? Uh, I don't want to steal more of your time. Um, okay, <clears throat> but uh, uh, do, um, are there any objections to start to uh, try to put in some of the site requirements, which would need to be specified uh, into the specs, um, which is also a blocker for get viewport media? Um, I think for Get Viewport Media, we uh, failed to reach agreement about cropping. So that's, that's the next a issue. Different so, issue. Exactly. Assuming assuming whether we can agree on cropping, would you be a, a positive toward uh, specifying these requirements for cross origin isolated and document policy? I can. I think that sounds very interesting. I would be interested in hearing Harold's opinion, but me, I, I see this as a generally positive direction. Thank you. Uh, Harold? Yeah, so the, to put it this way, I'm in favor of trying to get together a package of uh, describing uh, the concept of <clears throat> the concept of a web page you can't navigate off. And uh, that's isolated enough to be a safe playground. I kind of kind of see this as uh, something that's probably broader than uh, a WebRTC working group, uh, because uh, 
the concept, the, the issue of uh, what things we can give ele elevated permissions to has been decades in the non-solving. So like you know, I'm uh, quite worried about uh, the best being the enemy of the good here. And uh, so that uh, we need to make, we need to make sure that we can ma can make progress on on what what uh, is ready for for adoption now. But uh, I'm in favor of uh, getting this concept specified. But I'm not uh, but I'm not willing to state a position on uh, which particular things should be blocked or permitted based on this particular concept. All right, thank you. I think that uh, allows me to proceed at least with the specification of the things. Thank you. Uh, do I have uh, two minutes to the next slide? Uh, uh, there's one more person in the queue, uh, Karin. Okay. Uh, yes, I think that uh, Harold raised um, an interesting point about the, the scope that uh, it's not really, well, um, side isolated is not really in WebRTC per se. I think that would be interesting to get the, the get input from the security folks, working groups, um, tag as well. Yes, uh, to clarify, cross origin isolated already exists. That's existing te uh, platform technology. So the new part would be document policy, yeah, uh, where we have a buy-in from Chrome Security at least, and uh, Anne von Kastern has looked at it as well. So yes, there are other people to involve there. Correct but I would be in support of uh, this working group. Okay, uh, so are people okay with letting uh, Yanni uh, cover the additional slide? We do have half an hour left, so I think I think we can do it. Go ahead, Yanni. All right, great. So this is really a uh, about cropping, uh, which is uh, what Elad uh, alluded to. Uh, and there was a proposal on GitHub, which uh, Apologies, uh, UN. I just put a slide together. This is really your proposal. Uh, let me know if you want to talk about over it, but I really liked it. I think Elad liked it, so it might mean we can progress on something. And that was to have basically three APIs that call the same underlying algorithm, taking a viewport as internal parameter, which is responsible for permission policy, prompting, and creation of a track. So if you want the full tab, uh, if you want the viewport of the entire tab, you call navigator media devices, get viewport, get tab viewport media. If you just want your own, if you're an iframe and you only want your own document, you call document get viewport media. And if you're, um, there's also an a similar method on the iframe and the benefit there, as I understand it, is that you can uh, capture the viewport of that iframe even if it's a cross origin document. Is that, so with this approach, there's no default option in the spec about uh, what to crop to and no surprises. And feature detection becomes uh, easy even for gradual support. Is that fair? Uh, UN, are you asking a question of UN? I'm uh, sorry, oh, yes, sorry, uh, yeah. UN, UN. That uh, does that? Yeah. Okay, thank you. And uh, there's some follow-up questions around permissions policy and site isolation, which we already mentioned. And uh, uh, questions, yeah, Elad? Uh, yes, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, but I think this is relevant and we would be. Uh, what's the difference between document and iframe? It looks, I, I could be mistaken, but wouldn't document just be the current, the way to get your own iframe? Yes, but I think you had a, a the benefit of iframe is to solve the problem I think you mentioned was that uh, if the iframe contains a cross origin document, how would you capture it? So uh, if it's the same with frame origin, then you could do uh, uh, you know iframe dot content document dot get report media, right? You can grab into and reach in. But if it's cross origin object, earlier proposals would have forced us to post message it and transfer the media stream track, and this avoids that. Is that right, oh, Okay. Uh, yes, that's that's correct, and that's the intent. Okay, I thought that uh, document get viewport media looks to me like a subcase of iframe, but maybe I'm maybe either I'm missing something or this is just a way of you know exposing basically the same thing but in on different surfaces. You're saying could we remove document get viewport media? 
Um, um, maybe. Okay, but, but the re, uh, what I intended to ask was, I'm not missing some key difference here, right? Like they would behave the same, but for different surfaces. Uh, different cropping, yeah. Well, because if we look, and for example, at navigator.media devices dot get uh, tab v per media, this one is it has an essential difference, right? It gets the entire thing, and maybe you would even right. want different permissions for that, or do you in intend to use the entire mm -hmm. permit, the same permissions for everything? Same permissions, and okay. uh, there will be need to be a permissions policy, hopefully separate from display capture. And do you intend to um, specify all of them all at once? Um, yes. Well, uh, in the spec, yes. And then uh, if, if some browsers have difficulty implementing one over the other, then feature detection becomes easier. Was uh, UN's point here, I think. Yeah, correct. And the, is, the idea yeah. is really to to have the same underlying algorithm, like the meat of the algorithm will, yeah. will be the same. And it's just the selection of what you capture that like you capture the whole thing or so part of it. That's the only difference. So you and what do you think about uh, Elad's point that maybe document get before media is redundant? Um, I'm fine with it as well. If I, I think it's probably fine as well. Yeah. Okay. So we could strike the second one. And for others benefit, the earlier proposals, we had ideas of passing in uh, an iframe uh, DOM node as an argument and uh, passing media stream track around uh, to do this uh, cinema cropping. So this seems like a cleaner solution. And if, if needed, it, it can be extended. Like if there's really a need for capturing a specific node, then we have an easy path forward, forward as well. Yes, we can do element dot get viewport media. Uh, I don't want to monopolize the queue. So if anybody else has a question, I'll wait. Or if you want to right. go forward, but I do have another issue. Uh, currently, there's no one else in the queue a lot. Uh, Yennefer, is that a good time for another question, or were you gonna okay. uh, on this issue? So, yeah, no, this is. Uh, yeah, I'd like to. Uh, it sounds like we have. Uh, I don't, I'm not hearing any objections on this one, so uh, I'm so, hoping we uh, can proceed on this. So, um, not philosophically, but I'm. Uh, I cannot find the correct word right now. But philosophically, for lack of a better word, uh, this looks very nice to me. The problem I see here is that one thing that we would want to have is to be able to crop uh, to an arbitrary frame. And here, this claims to give you that because there are transferable media tracks. Uh, but in practice, we don't have them. And in practice, it's unclear when we'll have them. And in practice, uh, it's kind of unclear when we'll have them working efficiently and correctly and on all browsers. So if we could have a mechanism that at least as a stopgap would allow us to say, OK, get tab, viewport media, and also crop to something, uh, to an arbitrary iframe. But we, you know, this is stopgap that can be later um, deprecated, then I would become very, very happy with this proposal. Well, I think this was this was aimed to to solve that. I mean, you have iframe dot get viewport media, so you have access to arbitrary iframes uh, in in same in, in same origin top level documents, so that you can capture. Uh, you no longer have to. You can now capture cross origin documents. The only thing you what cannot do, I guess, is my parents? if there are if there are iframes inside, if you want to capture your parent, then mm -hmm. uh, but uh, then get tab viewport media, then you get the whole thing. So so you you're you're inside an iframe, inside another iframe, and you you don't want to capture everything, but you want no, to capture so yourself I... and your parent. Imagine that I've got the entire uh, tab and it's exactly split down the middle 50 50 and one of them is the parent and one of them is the uh, child and we don't even need to say which one is which right. Uh, I want to be able to support both use cases. And furthermore, I also want to be able to capture an arbitrary iframe inside of my parent or inside of my child. 
Uh, basically, I want to give the application maximum flexibility, and I don't really see why we should not. Um, well, maximum flexibility is never a good thing, right? Uh, I mean, uh, so I, I feel like um, from the use cases we've heard so far, I, I'd like to know more about the use case. Uh, I think we we still have the option to do it the old way, where um, uh, at some level, so I, I'm 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 confused now. Um, so you were you like this proposal, but what was the uh, uh. I'm on the fence. Uh, so we've got right now. I'm watching a screen where there is a. You know, you're actually presenting to me, but it could also. I'm sorry, Bernard. Did you say something? No. So Go I'm ahead. watching a screen where th where there is a presentation on the left, which you're presenting. But let's assume that this was actually you know my own slides inside of uh, slides.google.com, and on the right side I've got a meeting at meet.google.com, and what mm -hmm. I would like to be able to do is to capture from the meet slide uh, pane the other one. And I want to do that independently of which is the child of which and how many other iframes exist in between. Well, if you have a child and parent relationship, then uh, I don't understand the side by side. Uh, are, are they siblings uh, with the uh, same parent or, or is one, if one is a parent of the other, then um and you want the uh, the iframe to capture uh, i'm saying so not we're, the document. we're not designing this exactly for the case mm -hmm. of you know the this particular application but rather mm -hmm. we want to support arbitrary applications and i can imagine that some applications you know meet is going to be inside of slides i'm sorry a is going to be inside of b and in some of them b is going to be inside of a i cannot right. tell you ahead of time um Who's gonna have who's uh, who has a, a child, and also maybe I mm -hmm. maybe I'm gonna have both slides uh, iframe as well as another iframe, you know, Wikipedia or you know some uh, you know IDE or anything in uh, in addition. Mm -hmm. And I just want to crop to that very one thing. I don't want to capture my parent who's holding all of those. I don't want to capture a right. child. I want to capture you know an arbitrary iframe. Um, yes. Well. If you have some, if you have some buy-in from the parent, uh, then you have this iframe .get viewport media API, and it's not like this would ever work without some buy-in from the parent because uh, your iframe, the capturer is going to need uh, a permission policy specified, or will not be able to call this method, and the target is going to similarly need to have a document policy in order to be capturable, and all this has to be coordinated by the parent. So um, yes. And I think, but, but so from a top level down approach, these APIs, I think, would hopefully be sufficient. But I'm interested in the use case um, that where that wasn't sufficient. And uh, I'm sorry, I, I, I couldn't really reduce that from what you said here. So maybe we can discuss that offline. I, I think the, um, in, in one minute, I think that the problem is that it's theoretically sufficient, given that we posit that we have transferable uh, media uh, tracks and that they work perfectly. But if we don't, then suddenly, well, okay, somebody can capture just the right amount, uh, part of the portion of the screen, but he cannot truly efficiently transfer that track to where I want to be holding the track. So if any, whoever was, uh, was calling the initiating the capture could just, you know, with buy in with everybody, like if he had some kind of permission token or an identif a very unique identifier or anything like that, that was expressly given to him through all of those chains of iframes. And then it just by specifying that to the browser, you could say, hey, and I want to uh, crop to this, then that would be very useful for, uh, for me and yeah. I think for other applications. And then uh, in the day when this is not only theoretically redundant, but also practically redundant, then we can deprecate this. Well, uh, I'm, I'm not going to, unfortunately, I can't uh, speak to uh, such a hypothetical proposal, which is not before the working group today. But I will say that uh, if your concern is that uh, should transferable media stream track fail to deliver this in the future, then yeah, I'm happy to reopen this to to uh, uh, to uh, add some more APIs to solve this. Is that fair? Um, 
I'm not going to mark that day on my calendar. So we so we seem to be. Well, uh, we, need, we can't solve all we can't move. solve all problems at once, right? So we got to iterate. So we need seem to be needing to move this discussion into, into the into an issue. Right, that's issue one hundred and fifty-eight. So let's continue the discussion there. We do have some minutes left to to say. Uh, I thought that uh, added another slide here. Probably uh, the wrong copy. What What would you uh, propose we do? We do have, I guess, nineteen minutes left. Uh, should we go over the plan for action on various things? Would that make sense? Uh, yeah. So wrap up the next steps for the stuff on the agenda. So right. uh, I'd, li I'd like to say, now that I've had uh, half an hour of, th of thinking after UN's proposal, I, I'm still of the opinion that I would like to say say that no we should go with a stream space proposal we should adopt ideas for for non-frame single hand single handling separately and uh, uh, and we should uh, adopt adopt the 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 current proposal as the, the other current proposal as a working group document uh, failing that i would uh, the, the other alternative I see is, is that we could uh, could ask KUN to complete this work into a document rather than a collection of slides and examples. Because there are so many st things that are either unclear, unspecified, or, or should shoot yourself in the foot. Yeah. So the the question is, I guess, Harold, how how do we get to some conclusion in a timely manner? I'd like I'd like to hear all those opinions because uh, when you and I uh, you and Janiva and I speak, we we often don't reach either a consensus or a or a significant majority. Yeah, I guess a question I have, and people can free to get into the queue is there are some elements that you and described that were not covered in any uh, previous proposal, like they had to handle mute and unmute, some of which could be applied to streams, I think, just as well as you said. Um, uh, and there were other issues that I guess people were raised uh, by, by posting issues to, to UN's GitHub. I guess uh, my overall question is, you know, I think, I think at this time, it's fair to say that both proposals are free to evolve. So, I mean, the streams proposal can certainly incorporate things from that UN had and uh, vice versa. Uh, and also, it's fair to say that there will be a lot of probably issues and other things that so UN's proposal could evolve. Uh, but at some point, it would be good to actually make a decision. I don't know that, uh, you know, we don't have a meeting till September. So we have <laughs> kind of two months here uh, in which that can occur. Uh, but um, I think it's fair to say that we don't want to let it linger a lot beyond September. Is that fair? Yeah, I would. I would definitely like to like to see the see the decision. So, I guess my question is what what do uh, what does the working group feel needs to be done to make a decision? I mean, we're, we're you know we have potential evolution of both specs. We have issues being filed. Uh, at some point, we're we're going to have to make a decision. What what would be in you know, can't take forever. So what actually happens there? Uh, I guess uh, we have a queue forming. So how about you, Guido? Uh, just want to say that uh, for the mute uh, part, uh, we were working on uh, PR to add, uh, to add uh, that to the streams uh, based proposal. So it is something very similar, adding a field to to the mainstream track generator to kind of simulate 
the hardware mute button. Uh, so, so it wouldn't be to explicitly set the um, the muted uh, uh, to directly control the muted uh, uh, field of of all connected tracks, since the browser is free to mute or unmute but to kind of simulate that if you, if you set it then they will all be muted similarly to the way uh, a microphone would be muted if you if you mute it via, uh, via hardware so it will be similar maybe the details might differ a bit uh, but we intended to to for, for the mute part specifically we we, we intended to do that yeah neighbor yeah, I think uh, ideally I would love to see uh, Harold and you and work together on a proposal because I feel they both have uh, things that I like and both have things that I dislike. Uh, I don't like uh, UN's callback promise API and I don't like that the existing spec exposes the main thread. Um, so I'm hoping, uh, uh, but there are very good ideas in both that might be able we might be able to combine and uh, uh, you know, if if people need help, I, I could also volunteer to try to produce something like that. If that but of of course, uh, uh, not exposing on the main thread is a showstopper for me because uh, I philosophically disagree with uh, trying trying to constrain uh, constrain developers by by limit by by making more differences between different contexts. So we have, we have a couple of points that uh, seem hard to disagree on. Well, maybe we could uh, iterate on API shape at least. Yeah, I think both proposals are free to do that. Um, I, I'm, I'm curious, Jan, do you have an opinion like in September, presumably what you said, you know, people improve things, you know, fill it out. We have two, hopefully two complete proposals in September. Uh, <laughs> what, do we, what do we do at that point? I mean, we don't want this going into TPAC. We don't have much TPAC time to begin with. Well, it sounds like there are fundamental issues we disagree on that are uh, unrelated to API shape, like the exposure on main thread. So maybe that's something that could be discussed separately without waiting for proposals. OK. Um, I mean. I could try to do a version of, I could try to iterate on UN's uh, proposal and making it stream spaced, but it sounds like that wouldn't, by itself would not produce any agreement. So I don't know how productive that would be. Uh, um, well, maybe we can try to reach consensus on everything and for the parts that we don't reach consensus, then we use, uh, whatever mechanism we have to, to solve that. Well, I, I should mention that uh, exposure to main thread, there's a similar issue in web codex that's going to affect any users of this API. And I believe uh, Chrome's intent to ship of, of, of uh, the current proposal here uh, uh, mentioned that they were going to abide by the decision in web codex. So, um, Strictly speaking, aligned with the decision in web codex. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Which is right. uh, something we have to do since we are depending on web codex. So. Right. Although, uh, in theory, I think, I don't think that web codex decision necessarily, it doesn't necessarily follow that we should make the same decision because I think there are even more reasons to, uh, to limit uh, media stream track producer sorry, uh, um, assessor uh, to main thread. Uh, so I think I would have stronger arguments than I have in web codex even. So, uh, but at the, other at the other end, I understand that, that uh, uh, the intent there might've been to offer concessions, so. So t Tim is on the queue. Yeah, oh, sorry, Tim. Yeah, I was just going to say that I kind of disagree and half agree with Harold about whether you could should constrain APIs in workers. I think you should, but only if they're different flavors of worker. I think if you've got a generic worker, then it should 
like do everything that you'd expect and like the, the you know audio worklets are very constrained but then they're kind of they're different flavor so i think that's a natural that feels reasonably natural to you to 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 you know developers um and just tracking back to the the issue about un's um proposal i feel like the promises of doing a lot of heavy lifting and there are a couple of things that he's using promises for that are when you look at the code is actually going to be much uglier than the than the snippets now it's unfair to say that while he's not here but like i kind of i didn't want to jump into the discussion because it didn't seem totally relevant at the point but but i i i feel that we're actually iterating very slowly towards something that is um it is actually a joint proposal it's just like i think if everybody's just kind of felt like they were heading in roughly the same direction and iterating towards it, then maybe you'd get there. Um, yeah, they'll certainly iterate. I don't know whether they'll iterate in the same direction. Uh, or uh, And we don't really have an August meeting to even keep track of that. Yeah, no, no, but I mean, just in terms of kind of the, the noises you hear about, yeah, we're thinking about handling mute like this, or yeah. or or you end saying, oh, you and you can mock streams like that. Like actually, you know, there's a there's a kind of um, polyfill streams like that, and and it's actually we're iterating towards a solution uh, to a, a, a common set of capabilities, um, like maybe achieved with different ways. And I I think I feel like we're closer than maybe the the emotion in the room feels like we are see what i mean are there things we can be doing to try to uh maybe track uh things or uh help help things along just wondering as a working group process um. well uh if we can uh, tell you and to uh, ask ask you and to actually Get the stuff to be a be a proposal that we can right share share ideal from ideal snippets from or pro, uh, procedures from rather than uh, where it is now and say that this is not a pull, pull request on media capture extensions it's a new document right so that, that's the direction at least Can we expect um, a kind of comparable set of movements on on your side, or do you feel that 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 proposal is already sufficiently complete? Uh, I do personally feel that uh, the proposal is not complete. We we had a proposal for for feedback signals, right. the stuff that travels in the opposite direct, direction of the frames, and uh, that turned out to be underspecified and underutilized so we deleted it again we need to back add something back in and uh, if we can uh, generalize a pattern that uh, does the mute unmute uh, and uh, and handles the the black frames and silence properly then uh, i think that would be would be a win and if we don't have to to disagree with uh, you end about that. So I think that would be a win in the in in the yeah, working together sense. Uh, so just a question. We, we, we are we, we will be open to changes. Just a question, Harold. Is do we have uh, agreement on the extent of the of the need? Because uh, I know we, you just talked about mute on mute and stuff like that. There were also feedback for other elements like constraints, right? That you had yeah. originally yeah. thought about. Do you still feel that that's something that needs to be in there? Because you went didn't talk about that. No, he, refer, he referred to it kind of sideways than when they said uh, verbally when they said, and we can extend this for other other purposes. Okay. I, I, I kind of feel that it w the proposal would feel a good more good bit more complete if we have a had a sensible pattern for handling hand, handling. Uh, uh, constraints, yes. Okay. Uh, note that uh, our proposal in specifies how 
tracks connected to a generator should do apply constraints. So what it doesn't do is that uh, it's not in the same direction of even that the constraint of the track should be propagated to right. the other track. Uh, because I, I think you'll run into issues there since constraints are a property of the tracks, not not uh, of, the, of the source. So, so yeah, it, it's okay to inform the other source, the source about the constraint change, but uh, so that so that apply constraints can reject, for example, because it contradicts the constraints of some other track that is also connected to the source, and and the implementation cannot satisfy both, for example, by using cropping or some other mechanism. Uh, but so 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 we we uh, our spec do does explain what is supported and what cannot be supported with say apply constraints. But it's not in the direction of of trying to connect the constraints of say the original track and the transform track. It, it, it's restricted to to the um, to the generated track. Yeah. So make, right. make it easy. Make it easy to. So we, we would like to make it easy to detect that the constraints have been changed and easy to take the the right action on the uh, on the other side, which might be to propagate them, to change them, to do something completely different. That's application specific. Jan Ivar. So uh, yes. So since we all agree that media stream track uh, processor and these APIs need to work well on workers, uh, it's the idea that if I want to play this back in self view, I would transfer uh, the resulting track uh, back to main thread and assign it to video dot source object. I mean, and if I do that. In our proposal, the tracks like are, constraints. In our, in our in our proposal tracks are always on the main thread. But you transfer right, they, they, they don't get transferred. Yeah, only the streams. Right. So but that doesn't sound like a viable model for workers then. Why not? So do we not have one? Why not? So what, 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 what is wrong with that model? I mean, you have the the, the media flow if, in the worker, and you have the tracks in, on the main thread. What the, that that's 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 the model we currently have. It's just that the sorry. the media flow is invisible. Right. So the, the, if you, if I have a media stream track generator in a worker, I, I'm JavaScript is producing a media stream track, and I want to play this in the video element. How do I do that? Uh, well, you don't. You don't. You don't, don't, have you don't, a, you don't are you talking? Are you? Uh, sorry, if, go ahead. Harry. To fir first up, you don't. You don't. You, you wouldn't have a media stream track generator in a worker. You would uh, generate a stream in a worker, and right. then transfer the. The end of the the, the stream uh, back to where you want the track to be, and then you have the main right. stream track generator. Yeah, so it's accurate to say both processor and generator operate in on window, right? Yeah, and that's it's the streams the, that get transferred, not the. Yeah, not, that, that's our current model. Yes. Yeah, that's the current model. It, Got it. And it. It depends depends on web code. I can whether we can keep it that way. Uh, I had one more question for uh, Elad uh, on screen capture, if we don't have any more issues. We have two time. minutes left, and then we're done. <laughs> so make it quick. Elad, Elad uh, sorry to put you on the spot, but in 158, I, I, I noticed your last comment uh, was, I'd be happy with this approach. And I believe I presented this approach today. So I'm wondering, uh, is that? Was there some miscommunication here, or um, did I miss something that I should have presented? Um, no, I think that I like this approach with the one caveat being that, you know, it doesn't really accommodate uh, for the fact that we don't yet have uh, transferable media streams, uh, tracks, sorry. Uh, if we could find a way that we would have a stop gap uh, for that problem, that would make me even happier. But uh, generally, yeah, yeah, okay. I, I think that's a good approach. So uh, uh, would you be opposed to iterating on this approach? Uh, we're, we're trying, I'm trying to detangle issues, right? Because we can't have everything blocking on everything else. We never get anything done. So in the interest of uh, separating these issues, would you be OK with uh, moving forward with a PR on this? Uh, I'm sorry, in less than two minutes, I don't have enough time to think and give a, right. a good answer. Um, All right. 
fair enough. I think we're out of time. So thanks. Okay. Hey, thank you. Back to the issues. Okay. Stay thank you, everybody. Ciao. Bye. Bye for now.